So after a couple disastrous attempts at ceramic slurry burnouts, I realized I need to make a proper burnout kiln. I had a leftover keg here from when I was gonna build a furnace out of it, and I figured this might be good for a burnout kiln. Now when I built my keg furnace, I tried to depressurize it by pushing that steel ball down, and that didn't work well. So this time I decided just to drill a hole in it, let the air come out. It's a lot more fizzy than I thought it would be. It's kind of like a geyser. Quite impressive really. Now I'm not a drinker myself, but I apologize to anybody who may be offended at seeing a river of spilled beer. Dad, Bob broke your beer! No I didn't, Doug broke it! So it's thawed out and I'm gonna build this pretty much the same way I would with my foundry furnace. I'm gonna cut a hole in the top, take off the lid, insulate it, but there'll be a few modifications that make this specific for burning out wax. But let's start cutting. A half used roll of tape gives me the approximate perfect size to cut a hole. So I use that as a stencil and start cutting. I use a speed square to mark off two inches below the weld bead at the top of the keg. Then I connect the dots with a piece of tape that gives me a nice straight edge to cut on. I'm sure there's better ways to do it, but this one works well for me. Now I need to make a place for the wax to drain out of the bottom of the keg. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just cut an X in the bottom. And then I'm gonna take a hammer and smash down those petals a little bit. That'll give some contour to help it flow down and make them a little bit wider. Then I need to make some measurements and go get some material. Now I try to buy things locally, so I go to Smith Sharp Firebrick Supply in Minneapolis. Oh yeah, and Minnesota roads suck. So I just got a one inch piece of blanket, two feet by five feet, so 10 square feet, and some coating to cover it up so the dust doesn't blow around for $51. The ceramic wool dust is known for being really caustic to the lungs, so always wear a mask when you're playing around with it. Now one of the benefits of shopping local is they gave me way more than I needed. It pays to be nice to people when you're out shopping. You know, treat people like humans. Cutting it to size is pretty straightforward. You just fit it in and cut what you don't need off. But you know me. There's always something I forget. Whoops, forgot to drill the holes first. Let me take this out. I need to cut a hole and add this pipe for my burner to sit into. That'll force the flame in the right position. I got this hole cutting bit and it's usually pretty good, but against stainless, uh, that's a tough one. I'm not sure why I'm using it anyway because the hole I need is way bigger than this bit. Meanwhile, I'm gonna cut the pipe off at an angle. That way when I put the burner in there, it won't be blowing straight into the furnace, but be deflected in a circular motion and that'll give a more even heating to everything I put inside the furnace. I started cutting with my Dremel, but then quickly switched to the big guy. This really doesn't need to look pretty. A little bit more and perfect. Then it's time to start welding. Now I know the professional metal surgeons out there would want me to have just the right welding rod to match the stainless steel, but I'm sorry, all I have is mild steel welding rod but it still makes it stick together. So for me, it'll work. But aren't those beautiful welds? That's pretty, eh? I want some handles on the side so this thing's a little bit easier to move around. One thing that's not easy though is drilling through stainless steel. It is so hard. I tried a drill bit, I tried a carbide bit on my Dremel, I went back to the drill bit, and I still can't get through. Okay, what's the trick? How do you drill through stainless steel? Why is it so freaking hard? I burn up my drill bits every time I try this. 
I even try to punch through it with a metal punch. It's thin, you'd think it'd work. It just bounces right off. But finally, I was able to get some holes through. But there's gotta be a better way. So I hooked up my welder, turned the amps way up, and tried to melt a hole through it. And lo and behold, it actually worked. I do this on accident enough. It actually feels good to do it on purpose for once. You can say it. I'm a genius. You cheat! <laughs> okay, the holes got a little big, but that's why they make washers. So now it's time to cut the ceramic wool for the lid. Now I should have known that since I had a two inch lip there, I would need at least that much to cover the whole thing. I cut this a little bit short. So I had to splice a little bit in to fill the gap. Just a lesson for you so you don't have to do that. I use my drill to drill a hole through the ceramic wool so the bolts will slide in easier. All these bolts and washers are what's actually gonna hold the ceramic wool to the lid. Remember any metal that you're putting inside the chamber needs to be stainless steel. If it's galvanized or anything else, it's gonna oxidize and scale away very quickly. If you want it to last much longer, make sure you use stainless steel. Stainless is your friend, unless you're drilling through it. Once the insulation is back in and all the holes are cut, it's time to seal it. You can see the size of this chamber is pretty big. I wouldn't be able to get this hot enough to melt metal but I need it big enough to hold the molds and I just need it hot enough to melt the wax. Now when this is turned on, all the air is gonna be circulating in there and it's gonna be blowing all this ceramic dust out and I don't want that in my lungs. So I need to seal it so I can make sure this is safe for everybody around, most importantly me. So to seal it, I got this bucket of Ludox. I've never used it before. I've used Green Patch 421. I've used Mineral Z Wash, but they recommended Ludox, and it's like water. It was 12 bucks a quart. And they say I just spray it on, and then I'll seal a ceramic blanket and make it stronger. So, let's see how Ludox works. So this is the first time I've used this product, and I guess it's known as a rigidizer. Once it dries and goes through a heat, all the dust particles should be trapped and locked away. Let that dry and give it a few more coats. It'll be interesting to see how many people skip this part of the video and then comment, you need to seal your ceramic wool. It doesn't look sealed, but they say that's what the product is made for, so it should be good. So the first coat's dry. When I put my fingers on here and take it away, I can see dust particles. That doesn't seem like it's sealed to me. I also can't tell how good a coverage I got with the Ludox because it's clear. So I'm gonna spray the rest on. Before I do, I'm gonna dye it. I don't have any liquid food coloring, but I found this Easter egg kit and it's got some dyeing tabs. So sorry to the nieces and nephews. You're gonna get some boring Easter eggs this year. I started with blue and figured that would be good, but it was still a little too faint to see. So I just added all the colors. Then my cheap sprayer quit working. So I tried to paint it on and that didn't work too well. So then I got a better spray bottle and that worked way better than spraying it out of the bucket. And this time I could actually see it. And the next step is to just test it out. I'm using the same burner that I use for my foundry furnace and I'm hoping I can control the temperature enough with that. I put a silicone rubber baking pan underneath to catch the wax. It's made for baking. What could go wrong? Time to put in my wax filled shell and see what happens. Another note. Welding gloves aren't made for direct flame. And my baking pan's on fire. That didn't take long. So I won't be able to collect this wax. I'll have to just let it run on the ground. I'll do better next time. But actually the fire did settle down and I was able to capture some of it. 
I'm certainly no expert in ceramic shell, but I know you have to melt the wax out quickly because as the wax heats up, it expands, and if it doesn't turn to liquid fast enough, it'll swell and crack your mold. This looks like it's melting just right. And another note, the outside is hot enough to start your wooden blocks on fire. So many lessons to be learned. Once it looks like the wax is all burned out, I'll put it in my pottery kiln to heat it up to vitrifying temperature and pouring temperature. Well, other than a few bugs, that worked better than I could have even hoped. The burnout was even, there's no cracks in the shell. So I think this is a winner. So after firing this, I can tell that rigidizer did set up a little bit and it's supposed to be secure. And what they told me is it would be safe to leave it like that. But when I touch it, I can see ceramic particles on my fingers. I don't trust it, so I'm gonna seal it. If for no other reason, than to protect the insulation itself. Because when I'm putting things in and taking it out, it's gonna be abrasive and this is a little fragile. So I want a more rigid layer to keep the insulation safe. And I think it'll keep me safer too. This is another thing I got from the Firebrick store. It's mineral Z-Wash. It's a powder, mix it with water, paint it on. It gets hard and it can take the temperature. So I'm gonna seal it with Z-Wash. So that's all there is to that. Real thin coat painted on there. That dries into a crust, and that's the only modification I'm gonna make. So we have a successful burnout kiln. Overall, I'm super happy with it. If you wanna see how that project turned out, come on back for the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.